Hello, I'm the PX Twitter and welcome back to QA Saturday. This is the series where I answer your biggest questions that have been asked over the past week's QA Saturday video. This is a good opportunity for me to answer your biggest questions about life, the universe, and of course, more importantly, Minecraft updates. So today we'll be answering the questions that have come in from both the last QA Saturday comment sections. And if you want to leave one for the next QA Saturday, leave it in the comments down below. I might be doing another kind of uh, Toy Cat reacts to memes next week. We'll kind of see how that whole thing goes. Because a lot of people have been enjoying the Toy Cat memes over at reddit.com slash r slash IBX Toycat, but I've done enough telling you where to leave things for next week. Let's start by talking about this week because the first question actually does come in from I'm a person 52. Very nice name by the way. Wait Toy Cat, if you fight the dragon, won't it destroy all the glass? So yeah, you're seeing in the background, I'm placing a lot of glass in my end. Lots of people are confused by this and that's exactly the feeling I'm going for. However, uh, there is a pretty important question of like, wait, when you respawn the ender dragon, which you might need to do, then won't it destroy the glass? And the simple answer to this question is yeah, I think it will destroy some of the glass, probably not too much of it and it's probably going to be easily replaceable, but the real answer to this question is that I don't imagine I'll need to respawn the Ender Dragon anytime soon. I've already got two of the uh, portals uh, made. I don't think I need a third, and if I really desperately do, I can kind of fix it. It's just that uh, on Bedrock, it's a lot less rewarding to kill the Ender Dragon than it was on console, because there's no reset end button, and in part because of that, I just won't be resetting slash uh, killing the Ender Dragon again in Minecraft. So, there's the simple answer and the hard answer to your question, but let's move into the second one, which comes in from Alex Nief, or Nief, who says, why are bark blocks not in bedrock edition. So first of all, I'd like to say since I'm IBX toy cat, I very much disapprove of bark blocks. Ha 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 ha. But no, more seriously, the bark blocks are a block which came to Java and didn't come to bedrock despite it being over a year gap now. And even though they're pretty solid blocks because they're six sided wood, it's all a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, you don't see them on the bedrock edition. And sadly, we've never heard the direct confirmation as to when it's coming to bedrock. But what we do know is we do know that they said it didn't come to bedrock in the first place because it wasn't considered to be an aquatic update feature. It was literally a feature which came out in the aquatic update, but the Bedrock team at the time, I'm not sure if this is true anymore, made distinctions between features which were in the update and features which belonged in the update. It's a confusing difference that I'm sure, uh, you know, has been changed at least internally because of just the uh, level of, uh, you know, confusion it does cause. But then there's also the fact that they have clarified they want to get Bedrock up to the Java parity with these sorts of features somewhat soon. I don't know what somewhat soon means, that could mean 1.10, 1.11, uh, but given that we're expecting the 1.10 beta to be fairly soon, again next week is the most likely candidate, I would say that you can see at some point in the next few updates uh, the bark blocks, the strip bark blocks, and all the other weird features like item frames and floors that just for some reason weren't necessarily in there. So let's move into the third question this week, which is going to come in from Pizza Pie 389 and this is Elon Musk, but with a moustache maybe? A slightly weird moustache, but he says Q&A, what job would you get if YouTube shut down? So if YouTube shut down, that'd be quite the surprise because it's kind of like funded by Google and it's a big part of their whole business model, but if YouTube, you know, one day you're like, ah, well, you know, we've worked out we can make more money if we just don't pay the creators or whatever else. Then I'd still try to make videos. I'd obviously have to redirect people to be like, hey, here's ibxtoycat.com where you can support or do something along those sorts of lines. But I'd love to have some way where people can still consume content and I can still put it out there. But since that's not the spirit of the question, I love uh, doing the loophole to things like, so what superpower would you have? The superpower to grant superpowers. I like to ruin people's questions. But to answer this more seriously, I've I thought about this a little bit and I think I'd go back to what I did before uh, YouTube. The way I afforded the capture card setup and all the things that I needed to start YouTube was I actually uh, did a lot of writing for various games, uh, news, and even like a software website at one point. That was a confusing one. Uh, that was actually my first time outsourcing uh, work to Bangladesh. Fun, fun story of that I could tell sometime. But um, no, I, I think like uh, the, uh, like honestly, I really love the idea of writing. Even when it was getting paid per word, it was literally like a cent or two cents per word. It was how I got my start. It was how I learned uh, a lot of the techniques, I guess, that have helped out a little bit on YouTube. And it's something that I, I sometimes think back to and think, ah, that'd be kind of cool. It's never cool enough that I'd enjoy it more than YouTube. It's always like, you know, I like what I do now a lot more, but it is kind of like, uh, you know, I could do that. It would probably keep me alive as long as I needed to. So that would be my plan. I'd go back to doing some form of news, tech, video games, something like that, writing, because I have a lot of thoughts that I always want to express. And I guess, you know, YouTube's a good way now, but if I had to go back to the dark ages of writing, I might do that. Because I read a fair number of like blogs these days and like, I'm sure there's some money in that somewhere. So that's the answer to the question, Mr. Pizza Pie. 389, but to move into the next one, which comes in from Dina Tercios, Turkios? Dina Tercios, who says, Hey Toy Cat, when or if 
the super duper graphics packs ever comes out. Will you use it more than the default textures? By the way, I love your video. So thank you very much, Dina Perseus. I'm glad you like the videos. I try my best, but to answer your question, uh, if the super duper graphics pack does come out and this year is the most likely candidate for release, but again, there's a lot of like ifs and buts. So like, uh, I, I, I've always got to clarify, you know, super duper graphics is this big, big unknown that they're working on. It will come eventually, but eventually could mean literally any time in the future that isn't this current moment. So uh, yeah, as, as far as like, if we assume it's coming out, when it comes out, I think I'll give it like a good world. Like I'll play with it almost exclusively for the first three days, maybe a week or something like that. But I'm not quite sure that it is the perfect fit for all the time. So for instance, my Let's Play, um, I, I'm really focused on the gameplay of Minecraft, not the graphics. Like I never use texture packs because I'm not bothered about how it looks and I just want it to look as simple as it needs to look for me to just do my thing. So uh, would I use the Super Duty graphics there? I might do it for videos. I might do it for background gameplays and stuff, but I'm not sure if I'd switch over entirely, but I might switch over a lot. So we'll have to wait and see on that one, but that's the answer to your question as I see it right now. And I think if you are considering the Super Duty graphics pack, remember it's not an always texture pack. It's a, it's gonna be a cool one. It's gonna be a useful one, but it doesn't make sense for PVP sometimes. It might not make sense for if you make videos or whatever. That's just the answer to the question that I see, but let's move into the next one, which comes in from the pap 000 who I believe is the same person as the Pap. Maybe he made a new account, or maybe it's always had free zeros at the end, but he's a long time subscriber, long time supporter, do appreciate that. But he says, how do you send videos to your editor? Question mark. So to answer your question, because if you don't know, I have an editor who helps out in certain videos. Uh, for instance, in the past week, I uploaded seven videos. Two of them, the server video and uh, the Bedrock Biggest Problem video, they were both edited by uh, my video uh, editor. His name is Cameron, Legendary Potato. So how do I send videos to him? Because obviously, uh, you know, I need to send a lot of videos. How do I do that? And if you're in the same situation where you need to send videos, I figured this would be a useful tip because Google Drive limits you to 15 gigabytes of storage, which is still a lot because I mean, that's just free storage, 15 gigabytes. That's a nice amount to just have there, but it's not necessarily enough if you need to send regular videos or high quality videos over the internet. So what do I recommend? And here's a sneaky little pro tip. Even though Google Drive and YouTube are owned by the same company, YouTube has no upload limits. As far as I know, uh, once you get past the 10 minute uh, thing, which I don't think exists anymore, uh, you can actually upload an unlimited number of videos, upload a thousand videos a day if you want to. And uh, because of that, as long as your internet can handle it, of course, uh, because of that, it means that YouTube is the best file hosting service as long as obviously you're willing to deal with the fact that there's some quality degradation, but if you're uploading to YouTube in the end anyway, that's my recommendation. I usually send videos by Google Drive. I try to get them done that way, but recently uh, when I hit the limit and I can't delete something, I, what I just end up doing is I use YouTube. So pro tip, free video storage site is YouTube. Unlist or private everything, of course, that's my recommendation, but YouTube is literally a way to send videos to people for free, and that's one of the uses of it that I didn't even realize was so amazing, but it actually kind of is when you think about it, that you can share videos privately anyway where for free using YouTube. And that definitely was not possible for YouTube. And even now it's still kind of tricky. So with that out of the way, let's move into the sixth question, which comes in from Wild Animal. You're such a wild, crazy animal, man. So I can't, how do you get out of the Minecraft beta on Xbox? I opted out, but I'm still on it. So to get out of the beta, what you want to do is you want to opt out and then you want to reinstall Minecraft because it can take some time because it's, it'd have to install an update to uninstall it. And it's, it's complex basically. So yeah, what you'd have to do is wait for the next update or you uninstall Minecraft, reinstall, and it should remove the beta. For some people, you've got to hard reset your Xbox first, but if you keep resetting things, eventually you will get back to the pre-beta. And I'm going to recommend right now, that if you are on the beta, just playing in normal survival worlds, that you don't do that because there's so many downsides to the beta that at first it's like, yeah, new features, but the instability, the fact that there are more bugs, which can break your worlds, crash your game. And honestly, the lack of being able to use, uh, you know, realms, for instance, and also just, uh, you know, not being able to play with friends. It's just so many downsides on an Xbox. I just don't recommend using beta. Uh, use the beta on a device where you want to check out the features, or you can even just watch the videos on this channel if you really want to. But I would say have a device where you check out the features and have a device where you play the game would be my recommendation for Bedrock because it's buggy enough by default sometimes anyway. You don't want to add the bugs from the beta there. I, again, after a while, like last year is when I decided to switch back finally, and I would make that recommendation to anyone watching this too because my Minecraft life has significantly improved since uh, opting out. And maybe that sounds like a weird evangelical way to convince you dropped out. But again, it's just something I feel like I should recommend because uh, I feel like I made a lot of tutorials on how to get into the beta a while back and uh, I was really on board of just doing it all the time. But now I've kind of shifted my opinion to be like, you know, what? maybe you shouldn't do that. But let's move into the next question, which comes in from I'm a person 52. Is that the same person from the first? It is. What a, what a happy 
suspicious coincidence. But they say, uh, could you show us a map and put a thumbtack on every country you've been to? So this is something uh, that a lot of people like to see, and I don't actually like the idea of having a physical map like this, but what I do have instead, something that's a bit more dynamic that you can see at any time, is uh, if you go, so on, on the Toycat channel, I've been doing a lot of Jetpunk recently. If you go to jetpunk.com slash user slash Toycat, I'll just show it on screen right now, hopefully. If I didn't show it on screen, then this is why I need an editor, right? But they have a map that shows all of the, it's not only just like the uh, countries, but for like uh, the Canada, the USA, and Australia. I don't know why just those three countries, but you can see the states as well. And uh, yeah, because of that, I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a cool thing that you can dynamically see update. If you have things yourself, like where is Toycat been? You can go there and you can see like in real time where I've been up to. So maybe that's an interesting thing to you. Maybe it's not, but let's move into the next question regardless because it comes in from General Catalian who says, Q&A, do you think adding a magical staff to Minecraft that damages enemies in a certain way, depending on what type of enchantment you put on it, would be a good idea? Question mark. Also, meow to you, Toy Cat, and I guess meow question mark right back at you. Oh, General Catalian. So he's he's cat he like he's a general and he's a cat, and you know, I'm IBX Toy Cat. So obviously we meow at each other. See, that's that's just high quality name to name interaction right there. But to answer the actual question, so here's the interesting thing about Minecraft. Back in the 1.2.5 uh, Java days, I guess I have to clarify now, uh, they really were experimenting a lot more with stuff like, oh, what if we had enchanting and potions? And then they kind of stopped experimenting. I think this is where like Notch kind of stu stood back and Jeb kind of took over because Notch definitely had the idea of making Minecraft a very fantasy-like game. Think about the potions and the kind of like divergence they have from everything every other feature in Minecraft. Think about enchantments, it's kind of the same thing. And yeah, I think Minecraft definitely uh, was going towards magical game and then kind of backed off and is a bit more like realistic magic in a way. But I would love to see staffs in the game. It's just after all this time, uh, the problem is now if they change their theme, people will be like, oh, they're just, uh, you know, like they're ruining Minecraft or oh, they're just trying to save. I don't know what people would say, but they'd say some form of thing. And I think it wouldn't go down well with the community because now people have been playing Minecraft for so many years that that would be a major change to the PVP to everything else like that. I I'd love to see some form of interesting new weapon and having magical staffs in say 1.15 would be cool uh you know that'd be a great reward for tunneling down below for instance i just don't think it's very likely because of how long minecraft has gone without that focus on magic but i'd love to be proven wrong i just don't think that i will be because if i did think i'd be proven wrong then i wouldn't think that that was the way i was thinking anyway with that said let's move into the next question which comes in from blaze who says do you think a soviet union reunion is possible and if so would you go there to experience real communism and i guess i have a travel question every q a so i guess this is the equivalent one like oh soviet union and i just wanted to answer this because I actually had an Uber driver in uh, LA who was from Ukraine, and I was like, okay, let's stay away from that touchy Russia Crimea subject. And he basically just came out with the opinion that, like, I think Putin wants to bring back the Soviet Union. And you know, I'm on board with that. And it's like, ah, that's an interesting opinion. Didn't figure there were any Ukrainians that held that one. But I, I thought it was kind of interesting that, like, you know, it's a real opinion of a fair number of people in the globe. Like, we're talking hundreds of millions. They're like, yeah, the, the Soviet Union should come back. It's a, it's a kind of cool thing. So if, uh, you know, even though it seems like it never should, it's one of those things that, like, is not impossible and all it takes is a few smart geopolitical moves and suddenly like oh the Soviet Union's back there uh, but I don't think it'd come back in a communist form I think it would have to be in its like kind of current almost republic where it's like a market state think about the EU more than the EU so I think they actually have something called the EEU like the Eastern Europe uh, Union or something like that uh, there is technically a union state uh, between Belarus and Russia and you know they want to get Ukraine on board of joining and you know we'll see how that one goes but yeah I think uh, I don't think a US uh, whole thing would possibly be possible and uh, it's just one of those crazy theories out there so now you know would I go to a USSR if it came back though honestly I mean communism would be really interesting to see from an outsider perspective but also terrifying that there's no real accountability and they could just take you away and kill you it's kind of like North Korea where it's like you could go there but you're kind of risking yourself for not much gain if you do. Anyway though, let's move into the next question which comes in from Preston Gonzalez, which is a super common question every single week for Q&A Saturday, but I have some great news, Preston, who asks, is it just me or does Bedrock Edition need shields? Because guess what? For First time in forever. This isn't just one of those comments where people are asking the same question over and over again. It's been answered in a million, uh, you know, Q&A Saturdays of we don't know slash coming in the future. But now I have some amazing news to share with you all because they did confirm, or rather I should say, uh, Aubrey Norris, who is one of the communications directors for Minecraft. She did confirm that Minecraft, uh, you know, Bedrock Edition is going to be getting shields and then implied that it was in 1.10. I won't say confirmed because it looks like just strongly implied, but basically shields and 1.10 seem to be going hand in hand together, which means if 
you want shields, they're going to be coming in the latest beta. When is that beta? Uh, it could be next week. Next week is the most likely candidate, but she said not even then. We can't promise dates. But yeah, expect at some point next week we will be covering a bedrock beta, which will include shields. And an interesting detail that you might have missed if you didn't see Jeb's Reddit post from like two years ago, uh, Helen Angel reconfirmed that the way you'll block, it's not going to be a dedicated button like it is on Java. It's going to be by moving back. And this makes sense for Pocket Edition controls, but it means that the shield is actually going to be different on uh, your bedrock edition. And I'm just so hyped to finally have shields just because it's the most common Q&A Saturday question. It will finally be out of the way. And also because it's a new opportunity to use uh, banners to make shields so you can actually bring your banner around with you. So yeah, shields are coming to bedrock. I am excited. I'm going to be making some banner tutorials when it does come out. And yeah, if you're excited too, then that's some great news. And I, I'm excited slightly because of the feature, but I'm mostly just excited because there won't be Q&A Saturday questions about it anymore. Thank, thank God. And with that said, look, let's move into the last question, which comes in from Dark Place, who says, don't know what people's problems is, but I would prefer needing to have a lot of crafting stations. Even if there is no extra advantage, that's why I hate the new furnace. It's just speed, not even saving fuel. No reason to use it unless they remove the functionality of smelting food and ore in the regular furnace. So, Dark plays. let me uh, provide the counterpoint here, because I could totally see the logic behind saying, oh yeah, I would love it if they made the crafting table less useful, so you needed to have a huge crafting room for all the new tables, because a lot of people in Minecraft have houses that don't really have use like you need a, a smelting room, maybe a brewing room, an enchanting room, and then what else really? You kind of out of rooms off that point. So a lot of people would love it if there was like, oh yeah, well this can be the crafting room for instance, and this can be the super smelter room. So the easy argument against this one though is the fact that you shouldn't need to have the complexity, you should want to have the complexity. Like for instance, you should be able to craft everything from the regular table, but there should be bonuses from doing from these other ones. So I think the, they've kind of like picked a hybrid strategy of like some things get bonuses on their own tables, but that's a better way to do things because then you need the room and you can like have a house of it, but then if you just decide to have a tiny house that you make a shack out of, you're not limiting gameplay features. Because that would uh, that would make it, for instance, if you had to have a cartography table just to craft any form of map, it'd be like, okay, how do you make a map? Well, first of all, you get four wood, you make a crafting table, then you get the uh, resources for the cartography table, then you get some, uh, you know, like uh, some sugar cane, then you turn the sugar cane into paper, then you go to your cartography table, and you put it in there, and then you make it wider using paper, and it's like, oh my god, that is so many steps. And uh, yeah, trying to add more steps to complex things, is not generally a good thing for new players and even just for anyone in general. Like, honestly, when you start a new world, it's pretty hellish sometimes, and I think it'd be better if it was less hellish, not more hellish. Call me crazy if you want, but that's my real opinion when it comes to any new feature, especially when it's trying to change up an existing one. Make it better, don't just make it different or, you know, more convoluted, because that's usually a worse thing in most people's opinions, especially in the new player opinion. But that's uh, my take on game design. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below, as well as, of course, if you have any Q&A Saturday questions, leave them down there. I also ask on Twitter a few days before these go up. And also, if you have a Toycat meme you want to suggest, uh, submit, it's on reddit.com slash r slash ibxtoycat. Again, I feel like the next two weeks, I'll do like a meme one week and then a Q&A Saturday the next. And we'll see if that goes well, question mark, because it might just do. And uh, yeah, for now, I hope you did all enjoy this video, because I'll see you all in a future one, I hope. Unless this is the video that makes you unsubscribe. You're like, you know, all he does is answer questions. I'm unsubscribing. I don't care if it's literally called Q&A Saturday and I watch 60 Minutes. If that's the case, then it was nice to have you on the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, uh, even if you hated the video and you feel like unsubscribing, because like we're getting closer to a million and it's like getting close enough that I can like smell it now. And I'm just saying a million subscribers smells good. I mean, it doesn't actually have a smell. I'm, I'm being over-exaggerated, but I mean like, it's like, what are we, like, 96% of the way there? Imagine being 96% of the way to anything, and then, like, not quite being the last 4%. So, help me with the last 4%, and I'll give you 4% off myself over the next few weeks in the video. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!